Special thanks to our friends at Cerebral for sponsoring today's video. Cerebral is a mental health platform that provides access to ongoing online prescription medication management, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, insomnia, and other conditions, all for a flat monthly rate. Treatment for ADHD, bipolar, and PTSD are available in certain states. What's great about Cerebral is it allows you to do visits with your provider, therapist, or care counselor online and from the comfort of your own home. And it's designed for comprehensive care and long-term treatment, something you just don't see everywhere else. Cerebral can cost three times less than traditional therapy services. And to start, all you need to do is fill out a short survey and answer a few questions and choose the plan that's best for you. So if you'd like to take the next step in working on your mental health, click the link in the description below and start the questionnaire and get connected with a provider right away. Your first month starts at only $30. Chuck, what's up? Why'd you, why'd you call this emergency meeting of uh, our explainer video? Well, here's the deal. What is the deal with football-shaped planets? That I, I saw this thing, and I was just like, I got to know what's up with a football-shaped planet. <laughs> well, it's it's playoff season, so of course <laughs> you're going to find. <laughs> like right now, it's, it's the January going into February. Uh, yeah, so yeah. of course we're going to find footballs in space. <laughs> yeah, now, now if, Tom, if it was Tom Brady planet, it'd be a squishy football. Oh, so, couldn't help. You can't let that go, Mr. No, Philadelphia I Eagles, man. Uh, uh, so here's the thing. Uh, so first of all, I have to be accurate and say the, 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 the planet was less like a football and more like a rugby ball. Okay, just to be clear. Oh, God, only you would say that. I'm just being precise. Excuse yes. me. Okay. All right. I got what you're saying. Because, Excuse yes. me. Okay. As I speak, we are rising through 4,900 exoplanets known in the universe, planets orbiting other stars. And in the year 1995, that number was zero. Right. Right. So if you count it up, it's, you know, uh, which is, is it a couple of weeks. I mean, how many weeks is that? It's 52 times 10. Uh, it's five. 100 times far that you know we're, we're discovering them at a beautiful rate so that the next the next thing is when we get wormhole travel to other stars yeah we can rank them in sequence where of those that have exoplanets so we can just do that right because um, I mean, that's, that, that's where you want to go like you don't yeah it's go, a destination you can't just visit yeah, a star yeah you, know, you don't want to just work. go see a star you know we could do that in hollywood so here here's the deal if a planet orbits very close to its host star, the tidal forces can be extreme. And just to remind you about tidal forces, it's, it's a fancy name, but it's very simple. If one side of you is closer to the source of gravity than the other side of you, mm -hmm. and that's true for all of us at any given time, but if it's severe, that difference in gravity will stretch you in that direction. Sweet. Well, it, it stretches not the right way. It will elongate you. Right, right. In the direction of the object that has this gravity operating on your physical body. And we talk, we talk about the moon and the Earth oceanic tides. It stretches them. And we see this as water sloshing in an, on and off the, the shores. Even though we are rotating into the tidal bulge, we, we, we're very human-centric on everything we see and think. And we think the water is coming back and forth to us. But as we said in a previous explainer, we are rotating into the tidal bulge of the Earth. It turns out that some planets could can be much more liquid and gaseous than Earth is. Okay. And liquid and gas are more responsive to tidal forces than the solid object, than solid objects are. You'll you know, Earth does distort. It, according to the moon's tides, but not as much as you see from the tides, because we're solid, it's just harder to elongate solids. But when you are liquid and gaseous, you are very susceptible. And right. so we found a planet. Also, you're no fun at a party. Why? When you're liquid and gaseous. Why? Oh, if you're you... gonna make me say it. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Fine. <laughs> so, okay. So these exoplanets 
that are not fun at parties. Um, th there's one that was discovered in particular, and you know how they discovered it. It eclipsed, it moved in, it moved in front of the host star. You okay, can't wait, see the planet. Let, it's too- Let me say it, it, let me say it. It transited the host star. Nice. I learned that from you, my friend. Nice, nice. So transit means it comes in front of it. And so that's how we knew there was a planet there at all, because the light from the main star dimmed by just a little bit, okay? And then came back up while the planet was moving between us in the line of sight. Okay, so now, it, so it's not like an eclipse where the whole thing is blotted out. It's just a tiny bit, but that's how it was discovered. So now watch what happens. If the planet were spherical, you can model what that looks like as it begins to cover the, its little bit of the surface of the star. Right. But if it has an elongated shape, then as it comes onto the star, we're going to see it at an angle, and it's going to be it's going to be it, the, the the curve of light will have a different shape than it would if it were a perfect circle coming across. That's, oh man! That's so they really they wild. did a careful analysis of what the shape of the drop in the light of the host star does. And from that analysis, they concluded that this object is elongated in the direction of the star on, on a level like it's like it's a rugby ball. That's really cool. So now from that, is there anything you can deduce about the planet? Like you said, if you're gaseous and liquid, you're more prone to you know, be susceptible to these uh, tidal forces, or is it just the proximity to this thing with very, you know, large gravity pull? Well, so here's the thing. So you might be, could there be life there? Well, if there's any place where there's liquid water, we find teeming with life on earth. So, and NASA is guided by the search for water in all it does in the solar system, right? Okay. The moons of icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn. And, and so water is a big deal. And so here's the problem. When you are tidally shaped like that, you are also tidally locked. Mm -hmm. Tidally locked. Oh, I just learned, I don't mean to brag or anything, but <laughs> I just learned that I was a clue on Jeopardy. Really? Yes. And that clue was okay. this person, uh, this person in high school invented a wrestling move called the double title lock. <laughs> <laughs> when he used yeah. to that made it up to Jeopardy. That's <laughs> you knew this about me, but I didn't know like Jeopardy knew it. I mean, that I thought that was just our secret. Um, That's yeah. Uh, that is the question that got many people to lose a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> now, if so, they said, "Wait," if they had asked the question like this, this astrophysicist, because that. I mean, if you say astrophysicist to most people in America, they're going to give your name, period. They're going to give either, they're going to give your name or they're going to give Carl Sagan. That's it. You right. can look at Carl Sagan and know the only thing he ever wrestled with was questions from the universe. Bill billions of billions questions. And <laughs> billions of questions. Right. But yeah, that's how they should have asked it. Otherwise, you know, you kind of, you know. Dangling out there. Yeah, yeah. man. They might have said this scientist. I have to check check the word. Right, yeah. But, but anyhow, Go ahead. the planet is surely tidally locked to the sun, which to its star, which means it's only showing one face, and it's the elongated side of the face. And so, so the the planet will. Uh, how, <clears throat> how can I describe this for everyone just listening? So this football, this this rugby ball, is always pointing towards the host star as it orbits it. Right. Wow. So you see the you see it um, moving around, always keeping its alignment to the host star. So that's a tidal lock. But here's the problem: if you're on that planet and you're on the side that's facing the star, that's right. going to get hot. Right. And if you're on the side on the opposite side, it's going to get cold because you'll never see sunlight because that is literally where the sun don't shine. So um, it's hard to imagine how life could be sustained under such extremes. The fact that we rotate is a force of equal, it's an equalizing force in the temperatures on the earth. It's like cooking and a chicken on over an open fire. On a rotisserie, you got right. it. You can't leave it. If the rotisserie stops rotating, you will burn one that's side of the chicken. That's right. Yeah. That's there it is. Wow, oh, that's great. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's our football planet. And uh, with this new technique, they'll probably find many more such football planets. So. We can look forward to that as the exoplanet count continues to rise 
above 4,900. It'll, uh, it'll be 5,000 when it hits 5,000. We'll do a special explainer just celebrating uh, that moment. Cool. And by the way, let me say it again. I've said it many times, but let it be clear. Uh, if you were born in 1995 onward, you have only known a world that has exoplanets. Wow. So I will knight you that generation, Generation X. So planet. Wow. Look at that. I see what you just did. You there. see what I did? You see what I did? Right. There? And by the way, I'm going to say if you were born from 1995 on, you don't know anything. <laughs> Chuck. You're, you're a bunch of like idiots. Okay. Chuck. And social media sucks. All right. <laughs> Your generation is a waste. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> Guys, do not and get write. off my these, lawn. These are right. And get off my lawn. <laughs> okay, before Chuck embarrasses himself further with half our audience, <laughs> this has been a Star Talk explainer. Just trying to understand football exoplanets. Uh, all right, Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. Till we meet again. Keep looking up.